I don't know how much you've been told about these little get-togethers, but I'm a bugger for a theme. I like a theme. Mm. And the theme for the moment is... And we kind of called it Clever Clogs, but it, it's not Clever because we were just saying earlier, you couldn't really say educational comedy, because that just sounds grim. What do you call... You do... It's called stand-up science. Yeah. And how... When people say... All right, excuse me, I'm meant to be interviewing you. Uh, <laughs> and what kind of a show is that? Yeah, I mean, I think first and foremost, it's a stand-up comedy show. There are jokes throughout. If it wasn't a funny show, I wouldn't be doing it. I feel like I'm a comedian first, and then the science has to be in service of the jokes. Ah, not the other way around. So it's not, yeah. I will enlighten the Egypts. Yeah, I mean, otherwise I might just, as well just be like a science professor. Yeah, but I feel like it, it's at its best when there's like a symbiotic relationship. Like every science fact is like a setup, and then I write the punchline for that. And then it sort of works in tandem. Hmm. But, but there is, yeah, there yeah, is yeah. science in oh, it. Oh, absolutely, yeah. That'd yeah, be, be, be I'm coming to see you in a couple of days, and I'm hoping to come out wildly enlightened. Oh, uh, yeah, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Note to self, rewrite. Um, <laughs> so, you are... Dr. Kaboom. Yes. How would you describe what you do, Doctor? Mine is uh, uh, similar, it sounds, but less stand-up and more character-driven comedy. So I built a character doing street theater with this character in outdoor festivals in the US uh, so that the comedy came out of his interactions with the audience, his interactions with whatever he was doing on stage and whatever happened in the moment. I have a strong improvisational background. So I built Dr. Kaboom, who's uh, German. So okay. I bleach the hair, spike it up, chrome goggles, orange lab coat, and motorcycle boots with flames on the side. And, uh, and I go out and just sort of wrap that character around. I take tabletop science demonstrations and make them bigger and a bit ridiculous, wrap the character around them, and the comedy flows from that. Ooh, wow, what, like, what kind of experiments, scientific experiments? Well, um, <laughs> I have a tabletop catapult uh, where I, that I use to demonstrate the scientific method by flinging pieces of bananas, uh, testing my hypothesis that the catapult was invented as a way to feed people. Okay. Instead of war. And then so I, I shoot banana pieces across the stage uh, until a volunteer, and all my volunteers are only volunteers, nobody gets forced to interact, yep. um, until he catches one in the mouth. And I, okay. I, I don't let them catch it for a while until I go yep. through all the steps and all the routines that I've got, um, and then right at the right moment, when the audience is like, come on, kid, catch yeah. it, <laughs> then I lob one right to them, they catch it, and the audience goes insane, and I make that child the, the hero of the moment. How wonderful. Mm -hmm. yeah. is it, and what sort of, a, well, I mean, if you've done it, or him, if, if the good doctor, as, uh, you know, in a busking and outdoor situation, mm -hmm. And any act that grows up outdoors is bulletproof because it, it's <laughs> not like um, you, there's nobody guaranteed to stop and watch and you know right, applaud right. unless you make them right uh, where you know with a because uh, you do Daniel you do walking tours yeah <clears throat> I have a comedy walking tour of Edinburgh it's called the Montebank Comedy Walk of Edinburgh and. Uh, my description of what I do is just Scottish history with jobby jokes, basically. You're looking Excellent. For, like, you were looking oh, for like, like, like a nice. way of describing it. That's how I do it. Uh, Excellent. A jobby's a poo, by the way. I don't know if you guys are American. I uh, know, you know, I was just pretending I knew. You were wondering. Oh, well done. I wonder if you were thinking about it. Yeah, it sounds like a hand job. It's, yeah. 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 That's, uh, yeah. That's no. right, the jobby. Yeah, jobby's a poo. It's probably my favourite Scottish word. Oh, right. I'll remember that. I never not laugh at the word jobby. Remember to use that in my show. Now, you see, this is becoming educational in itself. Yeah, the kids, are, the kids, the kids love, the kids love, kids oh, love yeah. the word jobby as well. Oh, so yeah. Yeah. Jobby's a great... <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's a great word. Yeah. J-O-B-B-Y. Yeah. Um, no, that's... Uh, but as well as... So, so you, what, what the, the segue was... Was... Um, <laughs> For a hijack uh, the, of a jobbies. The, uh, yeah, to, <laughs> the, the, the great outdoors is a taxing place oh, especially to do in comedy. Like when I do my tours, um, it's just like there'll be some 
silent disco tour. And by the way, there's nothing bloody silent about them. I mean, <laughs> they, they call them silent disco tours, and there's fuck all silent about. They'll be like talking to folk about Mary Queen of Scots, and then just like forty middle-aged women coming in, woo, singing ABBA, and just plow right through you. Do you know what I mean? Have you seen <laughs> Silent Disco? Oh yeah. Oh, you'll see uh, it here. Oh, yeah. but oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, right. you you seem very physically fragile. I mean, <laughs> you, you, you really, the, 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 you could be hideously injured. <laughs> it's, been, like, it's large crowds of people addicted to 80s pop music yeah, generally, yeah, right. and they have headphones on mm. so that people don't hear the music. Oh, man. Tragically, what they do hear are the people singing along with the music. Uh, but you know my favourite thing about it is, mm. there's always like on these tours, there's always one guy at the end who's just like carrying his headphones in his hand, hunched over like this, just having a miserable time. <laughs> and I always look for that guy, right? Because it always makes me feel better. I'm like, yeah, uh, yeah that's the guy. He's been dragged. He'll he's be been dragged along by his wife. Yeah. Well, I think he's also been dubbed the one who can hear the cars beeping at them. All. Yeah. 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 Oh yes, yeah. and they, it's once you're in that kind of. And uh, the, you know, there's a lot of mum dancing as opposed to it tends to be mum dancing. <laughs> but and there's that, just... and then there's like pipers, and there's like street performers, and then there's there's like members of the public. I take my big fluffy dog Bran along as well, which is like he's no, kind of like a. It, 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 you can kind of like mess up the tour because people just people give zero fucks when they see a dog. Like you be yep. like in a group of folk just speaking to people and they'll just beeline right through the middle because they see a big friendly dog. <laughs> right. Like, oh, hello. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, no, I'm show happening here. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I totally get what you're saying, Kate. Like when when you perform outside and you've got to do all these things, I think I, it definitely makes you a wee bit sharper. Yes. Um, uh, yeah. And, and you Absolutely. just you fight for every second to keep somebody's eye. On you. Uh, well, yeah, and, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, and for me, oh. sorry, if I talked over you, um, the working outside really. I mean, if you if you're working on the street and you're dealing with all kinds of people, you know, you get a few drunks every once yeah. in a while. And, <laughs> this is Edinburgh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, Edinburgh. So, so when I decided. This is Edinburgh at the fringe. What you'll get is maybe a few sober. <laughs> <laughs> well, but but working with those with that kind of crowd for years. Uh, when I decided to turn towards family audiences, uh -huh. um, it, people were like, well, can you handle 2,000 kids in a room? And I'm like, I can handle 200 drunks. I can yeah, handle absolutely. any number of kids. Yeah. I just can't be as mean. Yeah, well, yeah absolutely. <laughs> Have you ever done in outside? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, like during, you know, 2020, when all like the indoor places of were course. completely shut down, New York was like pretty resourceful as far as like putting on shows rooftops, backyards, parks, parking lots. So comedy was happening like all around outside. Yes, yeah, so we dealt with like, I dealt with like homeless people dancing on me during my set. <laughs> <laughs> Probably the worst one is in the middle of my set, an entire protest walked through this park. They were chanting and marching and stuff. And then, yeah, yeah it was a little bit rough. I just I had the Hare Krishnas the other day, actually, yeah, in Edinburgh. <laughs> big, huge, massive procession of folks singing Hare Hare Krishna. And I'm like, ah, you try and, and do yeah. jokes with that lipstick coming right beside <laughs> That's the best disco tour. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The original one. Yeah. Yeah. And, you get, and you find enlightenment at the end. Exactly. <laughs> but so it's, it, I think, although it can be a horrible experience to go through, um, I speak as someone who nearly lost an eye to a boiled sweet. Oh, uh, wow. they're, they're lethal. They have no kids. Have you know? People think, oh, adult audiences, but kids, they, they've got no compunction about if. It's one of the great things when you do comedy for kids. If they think you're shit, they'll tell you you're shit. <laughs> right. Yeah. There's none of that. Well. He doesn't look very well. No, 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 no they would no. just be in there. Yeah, they're, they're an honest audience, that's for sure. I, I mean, and it's weird because there's this mindset sometimes when I work with people and they're like, S you can tell they think if you work for, if you perform for kids, they think, oh, well, performing for kids is easy. Yeah, and it's yeah. because, well, you'd, you'd like to be a proper performer one day. Right, exactly. And you're just exactly. starting with kids. Right, and, and, and I always tell them, like, well, you've got to think deeper than that. I'm like, yeah, you can, it's easy to perform for kids if, you, if you're a hack. Yeah. yeah, you know, but it's oh, easy to yeah. perform in a comedy club if you're a hack. If you're a hack. Yeah. You know, so it's, it's the job is to do it well. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. I, were you a scientist before you were a comic or a comic yeah. who developed? Oh, yeah. yeah, I was a scientist before I was a comic. And what turned you to the dark art? Uh, 
a couple of very bad experiences working in labs. Ah. Uh, yeah. Tell uh, us more, unless it's going to be a spoiler for the show. Oh, no, it's not a spoiler for a show. This is something so traumatic I wouldn't even put in a show. Uh, no, probably not. Uh, <laughs> I'd say really what started it is, it's a very long story, but essentially the crux of it is one summer, like a professor uh, left me on the side of the highway in New Jersey. Uh, and I don't know if you, I, I, I was in New York. Uh, mm -hmm. So I had to find my way across yeah, state yes. lines. Yeah. And I was like, huh, maybe science isn't the kindest field. Uh, right, yes. Uh, so well, comedy is not kind either, is it? <laughs> right, but you can fight back. Ah, uh, that's a very yeah, good yeah, point. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, while you're not dodging the Hare Krishnas, uh, doing the, the comedy tour, I saw, was it last year or was it? I forgot. Last the, year, I, and you, The show you did about William Wallace. It wasn't, well, it wasn't a show about William Wallace. Last year's show was called Hour of Scotland and it was just kind of like anything Scottish I would put in it. So there was like jokes about Iron Brew and Susan Boyle, William Wallace, all sorts. Um, this year at the Fringe, yep. I'm doing a show specifically about Mary Queen of Scots. So my show is called There's Something About Mary. It's uh, great. And the poster's yeah, 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 got, yeah, yeah, yeah. got, got Mary Queen of Scots. That's the show title. That's the key. show at the moment. The, uh, yeah. 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 Aye, and so I feel a wee bit, I definitely feel more nervous about this one, Kate, because Why? last, well, last year I felt like if an audience wasn't going for something, I you could, could just, move on. I could right. jump lily pads, yep. you know what I mean? Yep. Whereas now it's like you're you're getting an hour of Mary yep. Queen of Scots, like that's what you're I mean, here if, for. If, if people do come along to it. You assume that's what they're buying um, into. Right? Because <laughs> they're huge fans of the kind of legend of Mary Queen of Scots, they're not going to be that happy, are they? Well, that's it. It's like, <laughs> it's, it's, it, it, I don't, I'm, I'm, this is what I'm worried about. It's like, Oh, sorry, I've just, just made everything. I've just made everything. This is like, this is like, like, this is like, we see a couch. There's now a therapy couch. Right, 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 right. right, right. Yeah, I've got my traumatic experience as well. But no, what I was going to say is like, with Mary, it's like you have people who I think will know too much. Uh huh. And they're and then they come to my show and they're like, oh, you, you've not talked about yeah, the yes. Earl of Arran or yes. you know what I mean? What about <laughs> yes. the four Marys and all this kind of stuff? And then there's the other side where I'm thinking, I'm going. Too, too much for your average punter who maybe doesn't know anything, do you know what I mean? Yep. It's trying to strike the balance, which yep. is probably difficult, but... And I mean, she's been, like all of the, the um, uh, Scottish heroes, well, they've been wildly romanticised. Mary I. She was an absolute dog's breakfast. Well, it's, woman, well it's, 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 one, it's one of the... <laughs> it's weird because I think we're at that stage of I wildly romanticising her, but also for centuries, because history is written by the winners, right? Um, for centuries in Scotland, that was very much the kind of the Protestants and the, the Presbyterians, the Calvinists, the kind of quite hard lines. And oh. so she was really kind of demonised for centuries. Mm -hmm. So the, the 20th century, you get this kind of recovering of the good name of Mary Queen of Scots. But then I agree, we've probably we've almost gone over the yeah. other side now to that kind of maybe perhaps overly romanticised and we've lost touch of reality a wee bit. You're saying the people that romanticised have sort of like lost their heads? Yeah, it's like, it's like, <laughs> it's like, it's like, yeah. it's like the, it's like the Outlander crew, you know what I mean? Like when I get people on the tour and they're huge Outlander fans <laughs> and they, and like having, trying to explain them what the Jacobite was and how this guy like, Prince Charles was actually a bit of a complete nutcase. You know, like, <laughs> and bless them, they're so disappointed. Yes. Kate, they're just like... Oh, I know, and also the fact that because in um, movie and whatnot, they've always got wonderful Scottish accents. Ah, yeah, yeah. Well, they spoke French. <laughs> they all spoke French. <laughs> they all spoke French. What? I did not know ah. that. Yeah, yeah Mary, well, Mary was born it's in... Educational the comedy. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah, right here. Wow. It's, yeah, in action. <laughs> um, aye. But yeah, so the, Mary would definitely have spoke with a French accent. Uh, Charles as well, he was born in yeah. Rome, raised in France. Um, but I, I mean, it's, it's, it's but to try not to dash like visitors' dreams and I stuff know. as well, you know. I don't I know, because I mean, if you just embrace their dreams, you probably get better tips. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I mean, I, I lean into it when I'm on the tour. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like rolling the R's beyond. Right, right. Hello, oh, <laughs> welcome to Edinburgh. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. Believe me, I lean into it, but uh, yeah. I might have had this one guy in a tour actually, and he had like, he had like this, this folder, this really fancy looking folder. And I was like, oh, what you got there, mate? And he's like, oh, I did like my family lineage and all this kind of stuff, right? Spent like 400 quid or something in games, you know? Wow. And I, I like this about Americans. I like that they really care about where they come from and all that kind of stuff. Because Scottish people, we don't have a fucking clue, do we? Yeah. And, uh, but anyway, this guy, bless him, he thought that like, 
his family were like Bonnie Prince Charlie's Pipers. Thought they were like full on Jacobites, like colourful, <laughs> full regalia. And then he finds out that his family are actually from uh, from Motherwell, which is like an, industri <laughs> an industrial town in North Lanarkshire. Do you know what I mean? I'm like, you just yeah. know that that folder's going to the back of the cupboard yeah. and never getting shown to <laughs> anyone. Like, he's sticking with the Jacobite yep. story. Yep. Yep. Yes. Oh, oh, I, just, you know. I used to, when it started to become like a, a big thing of, oh, do your heritage and all that, and who do you think you are? So I'd love, I'd kind of love to know, but I'd be terrified that I'd find out I was English. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that would just be yeah, the be worst horrible. thing. And you, yeah. can, and you can never unknow it. Right. You know? For my my father was convinced that we, my ancestors were Vikings, we were warriors, and it was, it's, so there's a romantic thing yeah. for that, which is, I find odd. But, uh, and then he found out we were, you know, French and German. It was, um, I was like, they were, they were in a landlocked oh, so, area. We weren't really. So the, uh, the, 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 the Germanness of uh, Dr. Kaboom is not random. Well, it's genetic. It's <laughs> genetic, yeah. yeah. I, 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 had, I, I toyed with what to make him, mm -hmm. and finally I was like, I, I, I don't look anything but American or German, so. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so German it is. Wow, but yeah. it's. So you have the accent? So. Yeah, yeah. Uh, hello, my friends. I am uh, Heinrich von Spatau. My friends call me Dr. Kaboom. It's a nickname from an uh, experiment with a cannon on a hamster. <laughs> yeah. It did not work. But you never saw such a little surprise on a hamster's face in your life. <laughs> this is dark for children. <laughs> <laughs> well, I then go on to say I, I'm only fooling. I would never do such a thing. And I, I keep it light. Uh, all the comedy comes out of a, from a place yep. of joy. Yep. So, uh, you know, if people are watching a lot of dark, heavy theater, you yeah. know, come to see one of our shows, because we'll make you happy. Absolutely. Well, mine's yeah. an accent as well. I'm just putting, this is a very elaborate character act. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I, uh, I, I saw I'm actually you. a French guy myself. Yeah. 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 <laughs> You're Mary Queen of Scots, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, the so, now you're on sort of School time, aren't you? Lunch time. Where, where, when? What's the show called? Uh, yeah, so it's called Ben Miller's Stand Up Science. Uh, uh, yeah, what they call that? Uh, they call that uh, not a Ron Steele. The, it says exactly what it is. I like that. Yeah, yeah, pretty straightforward. Yeah, it's, yeah. At, it's at the Three Sisters, uh, the Wee Room at noon. Yeah, exactly <gasps> lunch time. Have you been? Have you been to the Three Sisters before? This is my first time in Edinburgh. <gasps> really. I would start the morning with wheat porridge or Weetabix because it's okay. pretty full on down at the, the Three Sisters. You just seem so gentle and <laughs> I, I worry about you. Oh, I honestly that's very do. Kind of you. I'm going to yeah. pop along after, and I don't often get maternal to be honest. Um, I'm going to pop along after a week and see if you're hanging on. Oh, I appreciate it. Yeah, I can take care of myself. <laughs> he's from New York City. He's fine. Well, uh, good point. And he's done shows on rooftops. Right? Like the so, Beatles. Yeah, how about Dr. Kaboom? Uh, I just got really bummed because we're at the same time. Oh, so no. I won't be able to see your show. Uh, uh, but as uh, somebody earlier was saying, we, if, you become, if your shows are a wild success, you have to put on extra shows right. and try and do it at a different time. That mm -hmm. word. I'm hoping and to do an evening show. Are? I'm uh, at the Pleasance uh, Courtyard Beyond at noon. That's big, isn't it? That's it a... is big. So we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> well, I was. Yeah. I had <laughs> idea. No, I, 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 and there's more room to fire bananas out of cannons. Exactly. <laughs> and uh, whoever shows up, I have a good time. I did a show once in a 1,200 seat theater in Ohio. But there was a blizzard, so uh, 11 people showed up. Oh, the, um, the, the, we had the best wonderful. time. Uh, so whoever's there, we'll have a good yeah. time. And the, and the wee room is very wee. Yeah. I hope you don't have any experiments that need space. People could be harmed. Yeah, hopefully not. <laughs> <laughs> and you're at the Beehive. Part, I'm at the part Beehive. Of the Scottish comedy. The Scottish comedy festival. Yeah, two o'clock. Uh, but do they do the allow foreigners in, like, you know, the English, Americans? Yes, of course, yes. In fact, we've got the, uh, there's loads of international acts, actually. I just found out that Glenn Wool was on our, um, I know. our venue as well, yeah, it's great. Aye, and we've got uh, Brian Gallagher from Ireland, uh, Danny O'Brien as well. There's yeah, all, but all most importantly, David there's from you. David Canada, but most importantly me, aye. <laughs> Two o'clock every day, the Beehive. I think it's interesting, though, it's funny, like, is there a point to be made there in terms of, like, our shows are kind of like educational comedy, and we've all aimed for like that afternoon spot. Like, is that <laughs> right, right, is yeah. like, in terms of like you think, oh, your audience are up for doing, 
maybe sitting a wee bit different before they go and yeah. see something more like a club set or something right, like that. Exactly. Yeah. Like yeah. I, I feel yeah. like for for what I'm doing, my show time fits really nice. I don't. I feel like a show about Mary Queen of Scots at seven o'clock at night or something. No, and also when it, it work, is you know? Edinburgh right. at the Fringe, and I'm sure your your show is readily comprehensible to uh, anybody. But once people are blutered. And right. the Scottish weren't meaning very drunk. Yeah. Once people get blutered, yeah. they're they're less likely to comprehend the nuance of scientific fact woven into brilliant stand-up. Well, that's why I, I, I I'm hoping I can put together an evening show that's oh, adults wow. only. Uh, I, I don't go blue, but I do yeah. have different material for a, an adult audience. Um, same science, different jokes. Uh, oh, but it's, uh, that I'd uh, like to see. Yeah, it's a great fun. Day. Yeah, if yeah. I can make that work. Um, and of course, now you've got the use of the word jobby. Right. To improve yeah, you've got to use that. And, and he's free in the evening, so you know, maybe yeah. we could do a duo. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like the little at large of science. Right. So, and I, wait, I'm wait, sorry, who's, with, who's the little and large again? <laughs> And, and what are you the talking about? Hardy the science, science used to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That'd be absolutely class. That actually sounds like an amazing show. I know, right? It's right, right. really <laughs> up. I'm going to see that. There's, there is some terrible old joke about um, it's uh, uh, something like this has been a very you know it's a educational show. I've learned not to go and see any of your acts. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, I do. I take that back. We'll undoubtedly cut before any of that nasty stuff. But no, I'm coming. I think I'm trying to, I'm seeing you very soon. Oh, okay. Seeing you. I have to, I definitely. I'd love you to come see my show. Uh, adults laugh harder than kids. Uh, it's not a children's show. It's a family show. So I, I did comedy for 15 years before I switched to, before I decided to hey. focus on Family and audiences. So you, that sounds very. You can't right, right. Say that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I, I brought that with me, and I make sure that uh, there's nobody who's going to come that's not going to laugh hard. Uh, and it's. Uh, well, yeah. Ben was science before comedy. Were you comedy before science? Indeed. I grew up uh, expl becoming a scientist, uh, and then I got into acting, and then I got into comedy, and then 20 years later, I brought science back. Ah, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. See, it just. I know, right? Every day's a school day. <laughs>